what's going on everybody, Mala here, how are you guys doing today? This one is for everybody that kept asking on YouTube, on Instagram, after my review of the Razer Black Widow Lite, which wasn't silent, by the way. Why the hell aren't you using a proper, bigger, mechanical keyboard with my setup? Well, this is it. After all that, Drop actually sent these over for me to check out. And now I'm screwed, because... This is a rabbit hole that can get pretty expensive and I, you're gonna have a hard time taking me out of it because it's so much fun. I'm already researching every single premium custom you know, enthusiast keyboard manufacturer everywhere to be able to delight myself with even more cool, awesome things like this. This is the control from Drop. The box says Mass Drop, but you know, two names, same company. This box is a little bit older and let me tell you, this is awesome. Like, you can look at it and already see that it's awesome, but I'm telling you, it's really awesome. Now, this is an enthusiast level keyboard, which uh, another name for it would be a keyboard for keyboard nerds, so I've been told. But enough of that. This is a TKL design, as you can see, because it doesn't have a numpad. And I love this form factor. It's been a while since I've been using only like big boards, and this thing doesn't occupy the same space on my desk and I love it. The footprint is like just right. Honestly, because of the size of this being such a nice refresh on my desk, I 1000% definitely wanna try 65 and 60% 60 boards as well from here on out, because I have a feeling I'm really gonna like them. Now the plate underneath the keycaps feels like it could be a tad just a tad bit smaller. And the right section where the arrow keys are, also now that I've been using it for a while, it feels like there's an outrageous amount of space between the right section and the rest of the keyboard. But that's not something I actually saw as soon as I got it out of the box. And it is me nitpicking, I know that, because the spacing between every key is comfortable enough for your typing experience to be fluid, precise, and fast. This is a very good keyboard to type on and game on, actually. Now the base is 100% aluminum and the machining on these is absolutely tasty awesome. It looks beautiful. And to accent that beauty in every color of the rainbow, there's lights all around, all over. There's a light strip going all across around the entire board, plus individual key illumination that's very well done for every key. Now, when I say well done, it doesn't mean that it's perfect. Sometimes you do see a couple of near misses that as far as I can tell are caused because of these things underneath the keycaps that I have no idea what they are and why every keycap isn't the same. I, maybe it's something about the process of it and I'm not even sure if this is something that's random and another batch could be completely different, but they're not that obnoxious and it's, it's not something that's gonna scream at you as soon as you turn your keyboard on. And you kind of really have to look for it, but at least you guys know that it's there, possibly. The keycaps themselves are PBT. It's very high quality, like thick walls, no wobble. It doesn't squint when you press on it. They're rigid and super solid. It does have a little bit of a grain that's more rough than I expected on the top, but it gives you an extra grip that I wasn't used to and now I find really good. And also, since this is a standard TKL keyboard, any keycap collection that you have for standard TKL keyboards will work here if you wanna give it a little different of a look, like just yours. And on top of that, the switches are also hot swappable. You can even buy just the base and no switches, no keycaps, nothing directly from drop. This is a keyboard that almost actively encourages you to experiment, configure, and just make it your own. And by the way, when we're talking customization, I'm referring to stuff that I have no idea how to actually pull off just yet. I mean, if you guys wanna take a look at a little bit of what I'm talking about, you know, tamper with it in any way you want, check out this video from Brian P at Bad Seed Tech. You probably are already subbed to him, but if you're not, please do. That guy is awesome, almost at 100K, by the way. I'm definitely gonna be doing the exact same thing with my control. Well, if I can, if I don't subscribe. Care. Underneath the base, there are rubber feet, but no kickstand. It does come with these magnetically attachable feet that you can place either on the front or on the back, depending on the angle that you wanna type on. And I've been told that right when this thing was launched, 
these magnetic feet weren't strong enough, the magnets weren't strong enough. So if you pushed the keyboard sideways, they would dislodge the feet. But apparently they listened to feedback because these magnets are damn strong. Like you can push it any way you want, it's not gonna come out. It's actually difficult to pry them out with your own hands, by the way. Now there is no rattle anywhere to be seen. Just a hint of one on the spacebar and the backspace keys, but honestly, you can't really call that rattle for how they behave. And the bigger keys, all of them have stabilizers to help keep everything smooth, like just, mm. Oh, and there's absolutely zero flex across the entire board. This thing is heavy and it feels like a tank. It definitely is what I'm gonna be defending myself with against anyone that comes running into the office. Bam! Mm, mm, in the face, this, this is gonna do some damage. It connects via USB type C. You have two ports. One of them ends up being a pass through, but neither of them are USB 3.0, so only slow connections and not that much power as well. Oh, and in the box, they also include these, which is a tool for you to remove the keycaps, another tool for you to remove the switches themselves, and check this out. This is an actual screwdriver so that you can undo the screws beneath the keyboard if you really want to tinker, like this, this is attention to detail. I much, much appreciate these. So satisfying. Now I did mention, I think, that it comes with some things pre-programmed so that you can, you know, control the lighting directly on the keyboard with no extra software, as well as some media keys, volume up and down, play, pause, all that stuff. But it doesn't really stop there, absolutely Everything on this keyboard is fully programmable, reprogrammable, macrable, and any other crazy things you want to do. All you got to do is go through the QMK configurator, that drop has a link directly through their website, so that you can play around with your control keyboard and make it, ex make it do exactly what you want, the way you want it with each and every key. And also, if you don't want to mess up with the stuff that's already there, programmed into the keyboard, you can use layers not to, you know, lose the layer before or beneath. And Drop also has a link to a page with all the shortcuts with the stuff it comes pre-programmed with. So you can, you know, take it out of the box and just start using. And since we're talking about a keyboard, we kind of got to go through the obligatory, you know, sound test. So here you go. All right, now when Drop actually released this, it was around 150 bucks. Already not exactly cheap. And you can find many other very good keyboards that are premiumly built for around that price. Allegedly, I haven't gotten to test them all. Which makes it a bit of a harder sell, the fact that the control now is 200 bucks. And on top of that, since this is a non-regular product, you kind of depend on availability through Drop. It's not available 24 seven. Mine, for example, came with the Kaihua silver linear switches, which actuate like very highly and it's pretty precise and fast to type on, but there are other options like MX Cherries and Halo switches. Right now, if you go and try to grab one, all that you can actually buy is the base. Every switch is out of stock. Now, all of that said, the construction on these, all the customization you have uh, at your disposal, the materials they've used, the quality of everything, the attention to detail, it's not perfect, like nothing is. You are always going to find ways something can improve. But the fact that right now, the only thing I can think of that makes sense to complain specifically about the control is the fact that the LED strip around the base, you can see the individual LEDs instead of a single cohesive strip. That's sort of nitpicky. And I'm being super honest, everything that I can think of that maybe would have been nice to see differently done here kind of doesn't make sense or has been addressed by a different product. For example, 
It comes pre-programmed with a couple of stuff for media controls and controlling lighting. Even if you personally don't undo this programming and reprogram everything to do what you want, that's the expectation they have for anyone going for a keyboard like this. So it wouldn't make sense for the keycaps to have secondary functions laid out to begin with. Probably because if you don't like the way you programmed it once, you can reprogram it and then you lose the keycap? That wouldn't make any sense. So in conclusion, this is one hell of a keyboard and I'm super stoked that this was my entryway into this enthusiast game of keyboards. No, it is not cheap for 200 bucks, but for what you're getting, this being an enthusiast keyboard, I've seen a bunch of stuff from other brands within the $200 mark that shouldn't be called enthusiasts to begin with, and people who aren't exactly enthusiasts in this realm end up buying those because, I don't know, maybe they think they're out of options. And honestly, most of that stuff kind of doesn't live up to the challenge. Sometimes it's pretty complicated to get into something when your first, your very first experience is this high level. The bar has been set and it's been set so high that it's gonna be pretty hard to overcome. But I gotta keep trying, I guess. Either way, if you guys are into keyboards like the control, keep an eye out because I'm gonna be looking for other stuff to actually test. And also, if you guys have been looking for an upgrade to your own keyboard or you're just in the market for something around this price range, I would definitely recommend recommend taking a look at the control as one of your options. I mean, if they're available for purchase either way, because honestly, for what this thing delivers, it is pretty hard to find a package this complete. But that's been it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Battery died, spilled coffee all over my shirt. But it's fine, nobody's gonna notice. Um, I'm in the same position, same everything, sets the same, like the same day. Come on, minor details, minor details. Oh, hi.